Okay, so we've seen a few uh, good case examples today already of using INSAR. I'm going to just uh, review a bit what we're doing in Norway in terms of, of both producing and using INSAR data and uh, what some people might be able to expect soon from a European level. Um, so we've developed um, uh, what we call the Norwegian Ground Motion Service at INSAR Norway, uh, which is a, a platform on the web where you can look at INSAR ground motion data, which we produce. And currently we're using Sentinel-1 data to produce data for all of Norway. And we have measured approximately a little over 5 billion measurement locations where you can get a full uh, time series of deformation history. Uh, of course, when you zoomed out at a national scale, everything is green, nothing seems to be moving, but if, we all know that a lot of things are moving. Um, this project is part of uh, the, our Norwegian ground, collaborative ground segment. This has been in planning for quite a while. We started developing the service in 2016, but that was based on an earlier uh, studies or white paper we wrote within the government to just decide what we were going to do with this upcoming um, wealth of information that we would be getting from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 satellites. Uh, so it was decided to create a, a national service which would be open for everybody to use. Uh, we had a lot of previous experience using RadarSat and other, other satellites. Um, the project uh, uh, owners, I would call them, is, is, is the Geological Survey of Norway, but we also have funding, significant funding from the Norwegian Space Agency, as I said, since this is part of our national infrastructure, and also from NVE, which is the Norwegian Water and Energy Authority, the reason being that they are the ones responsible for landslide hazard uh, monitoring mitigation measures. And the system has been developed primarily by Norse in Tromsø, in Tromsø in Norway, uh, with help of a small company called PPO Labs. So what we've produced is a service, as I said, where we can go in and look at INSAR data. Uh, it's pre presented in a web, in a uh, mapping platform, which is also um, built for the service. It, it allows you to zoom in and pan around in full three dimensions. We have many background layers. We can have a standard uh, cartographic map, so we can also have, in this case, uh, orthophoto backgrounds. And in addition, we have an additional layers you can bring in, for example, geology and so on. Um, if you click on a point, uh, you can get a time series. Uh, here you see there's gaps in the time series. Uh, this is due to the snow conditions that we have during the winter. So on average, uh, in Norway, we have something on the order of six months of snow. Uh, we do uh, do the processing with a local determination of when the snow's average snow season is. So in some places, we get longer periods of without data and other areas with more data and less uh, gaps. Uh, the system also works quite well on mobile devices. Uh, how do we produce this data? We are um, automated automated as much as possible. We have um, uh, downloading all the new data for all of Norway every night uh, through our national hub on the, on the, uh, on the um, Copernicus system. Uh, so that amounts to about 4,000 scenes per year. Uh, we have a dedicated high performance computing cluster, which we have built for the system for the service. Um, so every night as these images are downloaded, they are unzipped and they're um, continuously pre-processed. In other words, uh, co-registered and so on with the existing stacks and ready to do analysis. So currently we do updates nationally on a, on, on a yearly basis, uh, but we can go in at any time uh, and very quickly do a, an update on a small area uh, because much of the pre-processing steps are already done. Uh, we are working towards probably doing more frequent updates in certain areas and more, uh, for example, in the urban areas and uh, in some high risk uh, landslide areas. Speaking of landslides, um, one of the main motivations for developing the service was uh, landslide mapping and monitoring. As you know, due to the topography in Norway, this is a serious uh, issue for us. We have developed a, a systematized mapping methodology for going throughout the country. And the first step, of course, is identification of potential landslides. And this is very much done now by using INSAR. And it, it, as well as other remote sensing things, but INSAR is the primary. This is just one example of a, of a large unstable rock slope in northern Norway. It's about 50 million cubic meters of rock that's sliding down into the fjord at a, a centimeter per year approximately. Um, and we also, of course, use INSAR for more uh, long-term monitoring of high-risk objects. 
Um, but since the focus of this talk is on urban jail hazards, this is of course also one of the driving reasons for building the service. Um, this is just a few examples. I won't go into much details. Uh, in the middle, we have uh, Trondheim, which has been built out into the harbor, into the surrounding fjord over the last uh, centuries. And uh, the most uh, recently built areas, in this case, 100 years ago, are still undergoing uh, subsidence. Uh, some other examples um, are from uh, areas built on marine clays or I'll say in some cases infrastructure. So we have a lot of users in who are interested in this type of data for, for urban and infrastructure mapping. That example, which I showed is from the town of, of Tunsberg in, in Southern Norway. In Norway, um, um, we have a lot of coastal areas that are built up on marine clays. Um, because of uh, the glaciation, uh, Norway and Scandinavia was pressed down several hundred meters uh, during the last glaciation and, and is still rebounding, uh, still uh, undergoing uplift due to glacial up, um, isostatic uplift. And, and so these marine clays that were deposited um, underwater are now exposed and, and, and uh, are being built upon in many areas. This is an example of Tunsberg. You see th these um, buildings with uh, a few of them are, are in green, uh, which are clearly new buildings that have uh, foundations built down to the bedrock, but which is surrounded by a lot of other buildings um, which are undergoing significant subsidence. Uh, in this particular case, you can see some, some, some examples in the field of, of problems this causes uh, with offsets and, and significant subsidence going on around new construction as well as old. Um, we've done some analysis uh, here uh, looking at, um, at, at uh, combining the various data sets. Um, because we are so far north, uh, we are lucky to have a lot of overlapping independent data sets. Typically in Norway, we have anywhere between four and six different uh, ascending and descending data sets that cover any particular area on the ground. So we can do a lot of work with, with combining uh, the ascending and the descending data as was shown earlier by Guadalupe. So, uh, oh, sorry, I can just show this is the history. I'll go back a slide. So this was the, the, the data from, uh, from Santa One. This was an image produced in 2019. Of course, we have updated things. But in this area, you see, we also look back at the historical ERS data and we see a similar pattern of, of uh, deformation uh, historically. Um, yeah, and there's been a lot of, of issues due to not, not just uh, the clay, but also groundwater changes. Um, so getting back to the current data with, with Sentinel-1, um, as was showed earlier, we have uh, different uh, data sets that are looking at the ground at different angles. So in this case, we're seeing the data um, from the satellite on the descending orbit. Uh, so it's, the satellite is looking towards the ground at an angle towards the west. Sorry, where's my mouse uh, here? And this is the similar, uh, same area shown using the ascending where the satellite is looking towards the east. Both of them show significant vertical uh, deformation or rather deformation away from the satellite. But if we combine the two, we can see that there's the vertical component uh, of the deformation. But if we assume no, no, no north-south uh, movement, we can estimate an east-west uh, movement. And here you see also there's a horizontal component. Uh, we can go further and we can draw some, some, polyp, some lines profiles through here and try to look at the angle of the movement by looking at the north-south versus vertical. And here on the right, you see uh, these four profiles um, with arrows indicating the movement direction and the, the scale of the arrows is, is, is proportional to the, to the velocity. So here we have a, a, a basically a bedrock valley that's filled with, with marine clays and the movement is, is predominantly downhill, uh, down rather vertical, but there's a component towards the center of the valley. Um, it's not only this long-term component, this deformation that's, that's uh, of concern, some sudden movements are also can be of, of great concern. Um, this is an example from Trondheim, uh, where again, we have an area that's, that's built up on marine clays, in this case, much higher uh, elevation from the, from the ocean. And this area here, as a residential area, you see a, underwent an abrupt deformation in the summer of 2018 uh, um, of approximately one centimeter, which is um, very interesting and of some concern. Um, again, we can take the ascending data, or rather in this case, the descending data and the ascending data. In this case here, we see a very large difference between the colors. So, so, so the uh, 
again, the, the descending data is looking towards the west. So, so the red points are moving away from the satellite. Um, and if we look at the ascending data, it's looking towards the east and the blue means it's moving towards the satellite. So this clearly is a, a movement towards the west as well as vertical here. And if we do the same analysis and look at the, at the at a profile, here we see the, just looking at the horizontal displacement along a profile that's uh, on an angle here down slope, you can see that there seems to be, have undergone a movement uh, that has a, a sort of a listric component to it. So it, it's uh, predominantly moving uh, this direction. So this is an area which we've recently uh, done analysis on and, and, and we're investigating into the causes of this, this thing. And it's a very big concern for us because this same neighborhood is, as I said, this is marine clays, but this is also in a, in a, uh, a hazard zone for, for quick clays because many of these marine clays have had the salt uh, structure dissolved out of them over the years and they have become sensitive clays. So this is um, the image on the, on the left is the, showing the hazard zone and the, and the presumed potential uh, movement direction of uh, a landslide, quickly landslide. Uh, so this is of concern we are doing follow-ups follow on this case study. Uh, just a little bit of an update on our, on our uh, activities. Um, I said earlier that we're downloading the data for all of Norway. In fact, now we are downloading um, the data for all of Scandinavia and Northern Europe. The reason being that uh, we have a, a project together with our neighboring country, Sweden, where, where they are investigating, uh, developing a joint uh, national service or binational service between Norway and Sweden. Uh, so we are now have released a full data set over all of Sweden uh, last year uh, and this last year and we'll update it again very soon. And I can show you some examples in a minute. But in addition, we are also uh, part of a consortium of companies and organizations producing data for the upcoming Copernicus um, European Ground Motion Service. It's a component of the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service. And we are then producing data for Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Poland as part of our contribution. However, all of the data from the entire uh, EGMS uh, portfolio will be distributed through our, using our mapping platform uh, for all of Europe. So just uh, an example, here's what it looks like when we produced our first data set over bo both Sweden and Norway. Um, and zooming in, here's an example from the uh, Gothenburg or Jöteborg in southern Sweden, which again is a, a highly populated area built on, on a lot of uh, clay, marine clays. And if we zoom in a bit here, we have an example uh, of East, uh, again, this decomposition of the data over some uh, very new constructions uh, in, along the canal. And that's all I have to present. Thank you very much. <laughs>